we have a really talented singer songwriter producer Sophia Mesa on this episode I just also don't want this person to know that he had such a that he had such an impact on my life okay we wanted to talk about crossroads and transitions in this episode that feeling of like loneliness disappeared and I was like I'm just gonna go move to LA and if I have to work at Abercrombie in the Grove I will it's not embarrassing for me to admit to you now don't need to reopen those but definitely journaling I think you should totally Um, open them and reread them Welcome back to another episode of the Millennial Girls Podcast. I'm Raquel and... I'm Natasha. (laughs) And guys, I can't believe it's already episode 11. I think we say this every time, but every time we get... Once we hit, I think, episode like 10, which was last episode, we were like, whoa, we've had 10 episodes. That's insane. We're, We're two months. We're like two months and supposedly... From other podcasters, once you hit episode 10, you're the real deal. You're legit. So Millennial Girls is official now. <laughs> We're so, what's that saying? We're official. We need a whistle. Is that it? I think that is. I don't but really what know. is a whistle for? What does that do? Like, it makes you like a referee, right? Or like, no? What? <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, we are really excited about this episode. We're talking about crossroads. We've had a lot of questions being asked on social media whenever we do our Instagram lives. Thursdays at 8 o'clock. Hey. Um, About kind of people going to college and they're in transition phase. I feel like a lot of people right now are probably in a crossroad phase because the world is in a really bad place. Uh, I'm maneuvering. Natasha's literally in the middle of moving right now to a new apartment. Yes, so I am in the middle of a move right now. And it's super exciting because there's a place like just down the street called Edgewater, which is where I'm moving because basically it's very close to like where Wynwood is and everything, but it's on literally the edge of the water. So you have like a full on view. And so it's super nice because of course, speaking of, you know, relationships in the past episodes, I obviously am engaged so we both have to compromise what it is that we're looking for in a place so he was like I need the view I need the water and it's really cool because in Miami like I know in California it's like really expensive to live on the water but here it's kind of like you can find water anywhere so like if you get really lucky like finding the right place for yourself you can like kind of always have a view like if you're looking for that so yeah I'm so excited to show you guys a new space and I'm calling it the content house I'm so excited to come take pictures (laughs) I'm excited because she has a two bedroom. So I'm like, is the second bedroom my room? (laughs) I know. Seriously, everybody's like excited to like come over to the place. I can't wait for it to be just like complete. I know. It's going to be so exciting. You know, we've been locked up for how many months now? And so now you're going to be able to be in a new space and decorate and kind of make it your own, which will definitely take your mind off some things. And I mean, the photo shoots we're going to have are going to (laughs) be epic. So telling you content house that's what I mean unless you guys you guys let us know in the comments like do you think that we should come up with a name for the house because I'm calling it content house 100% but but I think it should be like (laughs) millennial girls house mg house something along those lines but it's not but the thing is as much as I'd love to call it that I can't because like there won't be like pink like it's gonna be very like kind of like coastal modern vibes like the the vibe I'm going for if anyone's been to one hotel it's especially one hotel in South Beach. That's like the vibe I'm going for. So it's like very zen I love that, ho- that hotel. I miss it. But but the second bedroom, I'm calling the studio. So like that'll be like the dedicated to millennial oh, yeah. stuff. But like I don't I don't think I can quite make like the walls pink, but we can definitely like this is the same way I did my backdrop in this place. Like I'll find a way to like incorporate millennial girls somehow in the second bedroom. Obviously, <laughs> as you should. So talking about transitions, um, but we have a really talented singer songwriter producer Sophia Mesa on this episode, and I'm excited to see what she she says about a transition crossroad phase because she definitely had a huge one very early on in her career. So. It's going to be interesting, and I hope this episode helps a lot of people. All right, I think we should bring in Sophia. She has a very busy day, actually, because the day this is recorded was her release date for her new single. So she's got lots to go on. So let's bring her in. We are Zooming in Sophia like we have done with all of our other amazing guests. And actually, Sophia has a connection with our last guest, Jenna Andrews, who we love and adore very, very much. So Sophia, how are you? 
I'm good. Thank you for having me, guys. Of course. And this is going to be up next week, but happy single release day. How excited are you about having it out finally? I can't, I can't even believe it's out because it was supposed to come out so many times. We kept pushing and pushing and pushing. And then when it like hit 12 o'clock, I was like, wow, out of my hands. It's fully in, it's in the world. I'm there. It's a, it's a really exciting feeling. And um, the, it's actually Ice Cream and Cigarettes is titled after my EP. So it's like the first song off the EP and the name of the EP. That's so exciting. And we watched the music video yesterday a couple of times. We've been listening to the song. It's such a it's such a good song, I feel like, for right now. Because <clears throat> it has that it has the little bit of the darkness, but it has still the edge and still the girl power vibe that I mean everyone kind of needs, especially right now. So when did you actually write and produce and all of that stuff? Because I'm sure it just kind of happened to have manifested itself the way that it did, especially with the time right now. Probably like six to seven months ago. It was my first trip to L.A. with Jenna as my A&R. Like I'd been doing sessions before and like gone to L.A. a couple times to write. But it was my first time having her. And she was executive producing my EP too. So we went into the studio together and she brought in her good friend, Paul and cook who produced it. And Paul wrote it with us. I was just kind of explaining to them, like this person that I continued that I was hooking up with and was trying to distance myself from. And, uh, yeah, that's how we wrote it. That song dictated, I think the rest of the sound for the EP. I love it. When's the, when's the whole EP going to be out? Well, I really want to release it on my birthday, which is September 30th, but that will happen according to when the next because we have two more singles coming and then we're going to release the ep yeah so exciting i can't wait i can't wait to hear the rest of them i have someone i don't know if i'm allowed to talk about it yet i haven't asked but i have a feature on this second single oh that's so exciting can you give us i don't want you to say anything you're not allowed to actually say but can you give us a hint manager because it would be so cool if i could say who it was Yes, ask Cam. Because <laughs> this is my first, this is my first like interview since going into quarantine. So oh wow, in quarantine that this person was like, yeah, I'll, I'll be on the song, and I was so happy. Oh my god, that's so exciting. Well, that's exciting for us too for getting the the scoopy scoop <laughs> because we love that. That's the blessing with quarantine too. Is like we, you know, everybody kind of goes back and forth with it being, you know, obviously a very negative time in the world and everybody's lives. But at the same time, you have, you know, this moment where you might've had the opportunity because of it to have that collab. So. Um, my manager just answered and said, I can. Oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I'm allowed to. The suspense. <laughs> I can't say. Never mind. No. <laughs> well, soon, hopefully we'll find out who is on the song. And uh, I really hope you get to, have the EP come out on your birthday because that would be the best birthday present ever, I think. Um, But, okay, we wanted to talk about crossroads and transitions in this episode. We thought it was really appropriate, especially right now. And Natasha's literally in the middle of moving. She's, like, between two apartments right now. So (laughs) it's kind of a crazy time. But, so, Sophia, you went to Berkeley. You were admitted to Berkeley uh, School of Music. And you went for like a week, two weeks, and then the whole record deal happened and you were like, all right, bye. I saw you took like one quiz. You went to orientation week. I know a lot of people want to either. That somewhere? I was, I was studying. (laughs) I actually don't remember like saying the whole like one quiz thing, but yeah, that is true. I was, I was studying on our guests, you know, we like to be prepared, but um, (laughs) yeah. So I think there's a lot of people, not just in the music industry or, you know, who are not only just having a crossroad moment right now or a transition because of COVID and everything that's going on. But I know a lot of, I had told her off camera, a lot of people writing into us are talking about going to college. They're going to be freshmen in college. And it's kind of like a crazy time, especially with everything going on. So what do you have to say to people just kind of in a transition period, go with your gut? I'm sure there was kind of a, do I go to school? Do I do the record deal? What What is the right thing to do right now? I didn't want to go to college. I asked my parents um, before going. 
I was like, can I take a, a year off? And at first they were like, mm, maybe, because they, they knew how seriously I was taking music at that point. They were like, maybe, but then I got into Berkeley and my mom was like, I really think you should take this opportunity and go to school because you're not signed right now. So like, what would you be doing every day? You know what I mean? And I, and I was like, but I, I'm telling you, if I stay in the city, like I can get a, a record deal. And they were just like, I think that I, in the end, my mom was like, I want you to go, but if you really don't want to go, you don't have to go. But I was like, okay, I, I guess I should go. Cause I could learn a lot. You know, it's good. It's I'll be surrounded by other kids who are doing music as well. So I went, I was like, uh, oh, fuck. I don't really, I, I like kind of wish I didn't come, even though like it was nice. I was just like, I didn't feel like anything was gonna happen there as if like, if I had stayed in the city, but I found out I had a meeting with, um, basically my parents told me, if you get signed, you can drop out. So I was like, awesome. <laughs> You're awesome. <laughs> and I, found, but I, was, I didn't know at that, point I was like how do I get signed like I don't really know anyone it's it's like it's hard when you don't have connections it's like how, like you can there's so many people trying to do the same thing it's it's like luck at that point you know what I mean and I found I had I had a meeting with um David Massey who is the head of Arista and he offered me a deal when I went so I I didn't go back to school I just was like, oh, mom, now like I have like a C anyway. They told me that if I got signed, I could drop out. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna drop out. You're like, I, I held up my bargain of the deal. So yeah, I felt confident. I was like, everyone's going to Berkeley to get signed. Or like, if you're a singer, like, I don't know, like, unless you're gonna do it independently, which is harder, like you're going there for a reason. And I was like, I got really lucky. Like I need to take this opportunity and like work my ass off. How did that opportunity unfold for you? How did you get that meeting in the first place? So one of my managers was a friend of mine. Oh, I mean, is a friend of mine. He is, I have two managers, Cam, and then this kid, Jack, who is my age. And Jack knew this other kid, Ezra, who I don't know how, he's like, he's like 17, knew David. Jack and him met and he, Jack, played in one of my songs and then he texted it to David and David was like, bring this girl in. So it was luck. A lot of luck is what I'm. Yeah. Damn. Yeah, but hey, it was meant to be. Right place. (laughs) It really was meant to be. That was totally connections, luck, right place, right time. I mean, obviously anytime something like this happens, it's not like you just rolled out of bed one day and you were like, I'm going to do this today. Like that's any industry. I don't even think I realized the situation until I came to the Sony building and I was like, oh my God, like this is a serious meeting. Like I, I just heard like you have a meeting. And I think my manager told me that way because he didn't want me to like feel a lot of pressure. He was just like, yeah, you have this meeting, like just be yourself, you know? And I was like, like, oh, okay. And then you walk in and you're like, whoa, this is real. That's awesome. That's, that's. David was so, so nice. Like I remember we went out to dinner that night. He met my whole family. It was very nice. Yeah. Seamless. It was, it clearly was meant to be. So when you talk about your, you know, your latest track and going into the studio seven months ago and putting this song together, do you want to tell us a little bit more about the background? Cause you said that you were kind of like in a toxic relationship and that's something that, you know, Raquel and I were talking about toxic relationships before going into this interview and just kind of wanted to hear your side of the story. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't a relationship. That's the first thing. It was just like, <laughs> hooking up with (laughs) um it was just I mean it was like this this person kind of you know gave me like a temporary like satisfaction every time we were together and like happiness of like oh he wants me but then you know he doesn't actually want me he just wants me for a certain amount of time or like whatever (laughs) yes um and I just was like I was like I shouldn't I know I shouldn't be putting myself in this situation like time after time but I do because like like ice cream and cigarettes it gives you that like temporary satisfaction but like you know it's harmful to you in the long run which is kind of what brought the title on I love I love the title of the song it's so 
like for me it's really attractive like even if I don't know what the song is about like it's like it just gives that intrigue and it just sounds kind of like you said temporary satisfaction so it's like this yumminess of it but then you're like what is it person is like they're sweet and like it looks really good but it's not that good (laughs) but like was it a mutual so relatable you know like like in your case you call it a mutual decision like why what was stopping you from like like why did you feel like oh it's harmful in the end like was that your own feeling because you were getting hurt or was it like other people kind of giving you that I mean this this person didn't care about me you know like I just I I really liked them but they it wasn't reciprocated right it was like hurting my like like I don't know my confidence like my yeah I mean, they was just you know it just makes you feel like shit <laughs> like <laughs> <laughs> that that's what it is so <laughs> no it's I, true I, and I think I think we can all relate to that I think uh, I'm sure many of us if not all of us have had some sort of similar experience I definitely can I definitely can say I have um oh, hell Raquel yeah. <laughs> hi yeah right listen to the relationship episode guys you'll know for sure I- even if it's not relationship you can be in a job that you know you're putting 100% into it and you just feel like shit and they're not giving you anything out of it. So if there's any piece of advice you could give people who are kind of in this transition crossroad phase of life, what would it be? I think you have to you have to go after what you want. Like you, if you don't, you're going to always be like, what if? And I really think if you, if you believe in yourself, like really believe in yourself and you manifest it, anything can happen. You have to, there can't be any plan B. You just have to, you have to go for it. I love it. Can't be a plan B. I think that is everyone's issue when you, when you hear people do, uh, do anything and they're like, but I'm scared and I have to have a backup plan. No, don't just do it. You'll figure it out. Hey, let's be honest and real here. When you're in a situation like that and you're coming out of, I'm, I'm calling it a relationship because whether you like it or not, it is one. It doesn't mean that it's a committed one. So in that case, I mean, coming out of it, yeah, you might kind of feel, you know, down about yourself or your self-worth goes down. And I'm speaking even from my own personal experience, not you particularly. And, you know, now that you had that opportunity with getting signed to the label and putting this track together and, you know, manifesting that and actually coming to fruition, I mean, you would hope that that made you feel good about yourself or, you know, whatever self-doubt you might have had coming out of that doesn't transpire into what you're doing with the music now yeah listen there's always there's always going to be like what if what if what if every anything can go wrong like no matter no matter where you are in life like you you don't know what's going to happen so you have to you just have to be passionate and if you are passionate like if you can't live without this thing then you're gonna go after it and you're gonna make it happen because like what you it's what like it's what your mind is set to do and whatever your mind is said to do is what's going to happen is what I've realized, even if you don't realize that. If your mind wants something, it's going to make it happen. Yeah, it's true. Totally. And it can, be, it, can, it can be positive or negative. Writing this song, and now that it's out in the world, do you know if that person knows that this song is about that person? Oh, my God. I was talking, <laughs> I was talking about this with my cousin last night. And I don't want to say too much on it because I... It's fine. I don't know. I don't want to be... I'm not like 100% sure, but me and my cousin were like, there's no way. Like, he would... No. <laughs> but still, hey, to all the success with the song, just because of that, you know? I mean, that's that's the crazy part. That's, that's the positive that comes out of it. I tweaked some things in the song. Like, when we first wrote the song, there was a line... There was a line in the song that now it's um, that summer on a different wave, but we had a different line before that literally gave it away like fully. Like there would have been no doubt. Like anyone that knows that person would have been like, oh, this song is about you. (laughs) I changed things so that they wouldn't. Right. (laughs) Do you think if they do realize or find out that they are going to contact you or are they just going to be like, whatever? No, they wouldn't. I don't think they would contact me. Um, I just also don't want this person to know that he had such a, that he had such an impact on my life that I wouldn't have a song about. 
I yeah, know. I feel, like- <laughs> I feel like it's different though than when you're when you're a musician because I feel like you guys can pull because you're so artistic and just so in tune with that side. You can just pull from any experience and it turns into this. He'd be, he'd be like, oh, I'm the shit. <laughs> <laughs> Ew, I just rolled my eyes because I don't like that for <laughs> that side of it because I don't want that to happen. Uh. That's what I think would be like his mentality. But I could be wrong. I don't know. Maybe they would contact me. I would. I <laughs> Now you have to let us know. Now, now you're going to literally be right. like, guys. <laughs> hey, a lot of times stuff comes full circle when you least expect it, but it's up to you to open that door or keep it closed. So I feel like in person they might be like, you know, was that song? I'm like, did you write a song about me? But then you got to just be like, no, what, who do you think what you, do you are? What do you mean? <laughs> yeah, like sit back down, sir. Relax. Oh my God. I love it. Well, Sophia, we wish you all the best with everything. We can't wait to see your career blossom. And we can't wait for the rest of the EP to come out and to find out who's on that song, the next single. Oh my God. I want to tell you guys. I can't. (laughs) And plug yourself on social so everyone can go find you and listen to the new single, please. Um, It's Sophia Mesa, S-O-P-H-I-A-M-E-S-S-A. And then like, I think my I think my Twitter is that too. I need to get on Amazing. my Twitter game. Oh, girl. I'm. Well, Raquel can. Me and, Raquel... <laughs> me and Twitter are not having a good relationship right now. My, <laughs> my account got suspended for no reason. And I don't have access to the email anymore that I made it with 10 years ago. So we're just. Me and Twitter are not in a good relationship. We're not in a good space right now. But maybe we will be. Hopefully soon. You're the best. Oh, my gosh. All right. Well, we know you have a busy day. So with release things, so we'll let you go. But thank you so, so much. It was nice meeting you. And what we say nice here is peace, love, and you. unicorns. Peace, love, and peace, unicorns. Peace, love, unicorns. <laughs> yes. Peace, love, and unicorns. Well, so it's, it's, it's crazy how with Sophia, it literally just takes me back to, you know, like my 21, 23-year-old self because I'm just shy of 30, guys. Like... This reminds me of like, you know, way back when, when I was a single young lad. and When I was a wee whippersnapper. You have those kind of experiences. I think everybody can relate. And, you know, from the relationship aspect to the school part of it. And like, I know Raquel, she was, you know, her dream was to be dancing in Los Angeles and, you know, doing auditions and stuff. And I had similar dreams too. I wanted to be a backup dancer as well, but I didn't, uh, go like full force into pursuing it because I was doing school and was still kind of like that was just always in the back of my mind like okay I gotta finish school I gotta do school if I'm doing other stuff it would be like alongside school not like one or the other like in Sophia's case where it was like her parents are like okay I kind of give you the permission to drop out but like not really but kind of if you get signed and she did so in the case of Raquel tell us your story because I know you were kind of similar I wanted to move to LA when I was 18 for dance when I was a senior in high school. That's when I got really, really serious about the dance whole situation. So I signed with an agent down in Miami. They were filming a lot of different movies at the time uh, down in Miami. So I was signed, was going on auditions once or twice a week, was leaving school early. Sorry, stay in school, kids. Um, (laughs) was Was leaving school early was going to dance conventions, was traveling all over because I knew if I wanted to move to LA, obviously, like Sophia said, you need connections and luck. So was doing di- different dance conventions, was meeting a lot of people, was meeting the right people. But at the end, when I was, you know, I was 18 year old me was like, I'm not going to college. I'm going straight to LA. Mind you, I'm 18. I like can't even boil water. So I don't know how I would have cooked for myself. It was bad. Um, I was totally not the school person. Nothing just really interested me because obviously, you know, once you get to college and you are taking your major classes and hopefully you're interested in them, you're excited about school, which is what ended up happening when I went to school for journalism. But studying math, reading history, like I was not about that life. I was like, okay, but I should be a dance right now or doing something that is going to help me. So my parents what finally... What was your goal in Los Angeles? You wanted to go there and what? Yeah, what was I mean, I wanted to be a working goal? dancer and choreographer. So I wanted to be touring, music videos, um, any of that stuff. At one point, I was like, should I audition for So You Think You Can Dance? Um, I took ballroom lessons, but then I ended up not. So it was just, there was just a lot of different, you know, living the professional dancer life. And I had 
friends who were already living out there and they were like, you could totally do it. And I made, I ended up making a deal with my parents and they said, you know, if you go to college for two years and you get your AA while still going back and forth to LA and doing different dance stuff and teaching, which is exactly what I did, you can move there. So, but of course, not even realizing I was still doing the whole going back and forth to LA, taking class, and I did this two-week workshop, and every time I'm in California, I'm so happy. It's my place. I'm going to live there one day. It's it's going to, I'm just, I'm going to be there. Every time I leave LA, I cry on the plane. It's like so, so depressing and dramatic, but I literally cry on the plane every time I, I leave. So I- Why haven't you gone? Why? Why are you still here? Why are you here? No, I mean, honestly, every time I was packing up my stuff in my room last year and then I got a call from the radio station that I was going to be the afternoon host and on, you know, in Miami, which is a top 10 market. And I was like, oh, well, OK, because I had talked to my 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 uh, mentor and I was like, I'm just going to go move to L.A. And if I have to work at Abercrombie in the Grove, I will. And he was like, Raquel, no, I'm not letting you do that. I'm like, okay, well, I need to be in LA. So, but then I literally had this conversation with one of my friends. I was like, I'm going to start packing stuff up. If I don't, in a week, get a job, because I had already applied to like 100 something jobs that summer and heard back from two, I'm moving to LA. So, I mean, I got the call (laughs) for a job here. So that's kind of what happened. But um, yeah, I mean, I've definitely had the crossroad transition moment for sure happen I ended up breaking my foot dancing in college and that had kind of put a damper on things obviously and now I have arthritis in my foot and I mean it's it's crazy like the second you turn 21 and if you're a dancer and you're older than that you could totally attest this but your body starts changing. You are not as flexible as you used to be. Everything hurts. Like my body was just, even now, like I feel like I'm 90 years old sometimes when it's raining. I can, my bones just ache and hurt. I have arthritis in my foot. Like your window of opportunity is only so big. So in my case, when I started getting into all of the journalism classes at, at FAU, which we had talked about on the episode with Ashley, I loved what I was doing. I I was so into it. I'd never loved school so much in my life. Like I actually wanted to go to class and I ended up mentoring one of my classes. So for me, it was just the direction that it completely like changed, which I never thought would happen ever. I only knew dance. Dance was everything I knew. I knew I wanted to be a television radio host, but I thought that was going to be so much later down in my later on in my life. And all the little things along the way have just kind of transpired and and made, you know, made me be where I am today which is now with our cool podcast but I mean I've had so many moments being like okay this is changing and it's scary because you think you know something and you want something your whole life and then it the priority shifts and it's it's scary it's new and like Sophia said you know you can't really have a plan b because if you have a plan b you're already thinking about plan a not working out and that negative energy is just in your mind when you started university and knowing that you had like kind of like cut this deal with your parents mm-hmm. and you started liking the classes were you in any way regretting or wishing you were in LA still when did you in your mind like tell yourself I don't want I don't want to say quit or give up but like when in your mind were you like settled with the fact that you're like I might not do dance anymore I think it was once my I broke my foot honestly like it was such a devastating blow for me I'd never broken a bone and I remember the night I broke my foot because I, I broke it at rehearsal for dance mind you so I remember crying hysterically literally the whole night being up and just my face the next day was so puffy when my mom picked me up from my from my apartment to take me to the doctor and I was like my life is over dance is over it's over and I mean dramatically obviously it wasn't but seriously after that happened I was not the same foot bones any of that like definitely not the same but I think that was as bad as that is to say like the universe picking me up and putting me in the different direction because that was sophomore year I broke my foot literally that summer I ended up interning for Y100 which is I Heart in Miami I was working for this tennis tournament in Delray Beach which was letting me do some, uh, because I broke my foot, was letting me do in arena kind of hosting kind of stuff and interviewing players and doing different stuff like that. So 
It's literally like the universe picked me up and plucked me and said, you're going this direction, lady. Sorry. Like, this is happening. Um, I know for some people it doesn't happen like that. Like, I feel like the transition period I'm in now is not as simple. (laughs) I'm kind of like, (laughs) what am I doing with my life right now? So I wish I had the universe pick me up and plot me again in that direction. But maybe it'll happen next week, guys. You never know. But I think that I never – I don't think I ever had the – I'm never dancing. I think it was more just my priorities and my direction shifted because I ended up teaching dance for six years and I had done, I still did some shows and still did some stuff. So it's not like I completely just cut it out of my life, but it wasn't the, I'm just going to be a dancer. It was more of a multi well-rounded person. Going back to everyone writing in always last week and this week on our Instagram live, I'm going to college and I, I want to pick this back up and I want to do this. Honestly, college is the time to do it. And if you don't know what you want to do with your life, join different clubs, do different things, sit down and be like, what do I actually enjoy? Because you don't want to go to school for four years or more and then be like, I hate what I'm doing. I think a lot of friends of mine have that experience too because it's very rare for me to tell you like, oh, I had, you know, tons of friends that loved school. Like, no, I can't really remember anybody really loving school. In my case, I have obviously touched on this before where it took me a while to graduate. So when I got out of high school, um, I immediately went to, you know, summer classes. I took like biology and like philosophy or something just like to start getting my general credits out of the way at community college and I remember a lot of friends of mine that were a little bit older than me were telling me that if you start in the community college and then transfer to university you're going to be stuck in community college and I was like no like I'm gonna I'm gonna do this like I'm just gonna power through and like get it over with so I can just like keep like kind of like speed through complete opposite thing happened so I (laughs) didn't pass all my classes when I was first starting because again like mentally I was not all there like Again, I was like, Sophia was like, I was sitting outside of my balcony in San Francisco and I was like, should I go here? Should I go? I got into the Academy of Art. Should I paint? Smoke a cigarette on my balcony. Like I, I smoked cigarettes for two months in San Francisco. And then I was like, okay, over it. Like that, that literally like this is, you were in like that experimental phase. Yeah. It was the first time that I was out of my house by myself or like with a friend of mine, like where I was not with my family or parents at all. And I I had that time to, I guess, like figure out who I was and I was dancing a lot too. I had been training. I was in my varsity dance team in high school. And so when I got out of high school, I was like, I really want to train really hard in hip hop because hip hop was my thing. And that's where I always got noticed by teachers since I was young. And I was training, um, with like a lot of the dancers in Funkonometry in San Francisco And I just noticed, like, I always kind of stood out. And, again, it's really funny how, you know, we're all obviously talking about a lot of, like, racial stuff right now. And I noticed that, like, you know, I was, like, the Latin girl, I guess. Like, whatever. White American Latin girl. And a lot of the dancers were, like, Filipino. And they would all kind of do their little clan of, like, friends. And that's totally fine, whatever. Like, I made friends with a couple people, too. Obviously, all races. But it's funny how like, you know, everybody still has their clicks and you get along with whoever it is that you get along with. So I personally would kind of shy out of it when I would do the classes. And so I was training like I think I would take like six classes a week. Um, I would go into freestyle sessions. I would just pop in and watch people dance so that I wouldn't I wouldn't freestyle so much because I was always like really insecure about just like trying something new in front of others and like even to myself like if I looked at myself in the mirror to like make up a move like I felt awkward as hell like I was just like I I don't know like I didn't give my I was too much of a perfectionist to like see myself fuck up while I'm dancing so I never got that far and then once I had auditioned for the Funkonomity team I saw everybody in their cliques and I was never in the clique And so I saw them starting to pick out the dancers like to be part of the team or go into like second round of auditions and they wouldn't pick me. Mm. And so I would always think like, is it because I'm not Filipino? Is it because I'm not part of the cliques like of everybody kind of knowing each other? And I also wasn't like making that effort, I guess, of like really befriending everybody either. Like that's always something that I just I'm a little bit more introverted. So that honestly is what stopped me dancing. It's it's so sad. It's really super sad. Are you serious? I swear it's not embarrassing for me to admit to you now in the current it's embarrassing for me looking back at myself thinking shit like why did I let that stop me you know 
Because, like, now yeah. the person that I am today, and obviously it took, you know, moments like that for me to realize, like, that shouldn't stop me. But I felt, these are the things I felt. I felt insecure because I was like, maybe I'm not good enough dancer. I felt that I wasn't part of the group. Maybe I'm not uh, social enough that I need to be, and, like, everybody in the dance world needs to know each other and connect. So I started doubting myself so much that I kind of just, like, focused on something else. And so I had auditioned also for the musical when I did Grease and everything, like, the episode that we did with Lodato. And I got a part in there, so I kind of, like, shifted my focus to just, like, okay, I'll do the musical thing. Yeah. And then I, the days that I would be, like, I guess, rehearsing the musical, that's when I would have been taking class. And so that's when it just totally split for me. So it's super, super sad because I know, like, going back, I definitely would have done it different. I would have said, you know what, like, kind of screw the musical because that wasn't really going to get me anything. Like, I wasn't in a big school. I was going to City College of San Francisco, so, like, it's not like a... I don't want to say, but like, it's not like a resume thing where it's like, oh, I was it's not in this like you were at with Juilliard. This. It's right. Like, yeah. And then don't get me wrong. Over time, I started to dance. And yeah, that's what happened. And so after I kind of, you know, I did the musical and I finished City College of San Francisco. I was finishing like my general ed and stuff. Always in the back of my mind, I knew that I wanted to complete school. I just, I guess, didn't really set a timeline for myself at that point anymore because already, like, two years gone by. Then four years went by, and I was kind of passing some and not passing the others. And Were you taking classes just, that you didn't necessarily, if you look back now, you didn't need to take? No, I needed to take them all because they were general ed. Oh, okay. It was, it was like, the first two, like, all your general classes, like, you were, you had to take them to transfer. Mm, so, okay. like, what I did is, is at a certain point, like, since my GPA wouldn't be high enough, and then I reached the classes to, like, raise everything, certain schools required certain things to transfer. So, yeah. again, this is an experience as a transfer, not going in as a freshman, but... When I was doing that, it was like in California, they had certain rules and then they were only admitting people in the fall, not the spring in certain schools and just a lot of different things. That each school, I will so say, many different yeah, each school options. lets you have to like look at different things because I even when I was my senior year in college, when I was looking, I was looking at colleges depending on their dance department and their journalism department and their dance right. team. One of the schools, I think, made you for your first two years take physics and I was like yep not going there because I'm not taking physics because I know I'm never in my life going to use physics so I mean for me again it was a little bit of a different situation I knew I was either going the dance route or the journalism route because I, in that's just what was happening so I knew I can't pass physics not happening wasn't gonna go there so I, I <laughs> literally eliminated colleges because of stuff like that but I mean, I love yeah, my but college. It, so. but, and in and, and your case, it, it worked out and it was probably the smart choice for you in particular, you know? I mean, if you would have forced yourself to do the other, maybe you would have had the same experience as me where it was like, it just took me so long to finish because I, my heart wasn't there. Like I yeah. didn't care about the school or the class enough. And like the ones that I did, you know, even, even the ones that I did care about, I still didn't get the best grades in them. Like, even my art classes, like, I created some of the most beautiful, like, paintings and stuff, like, insert photo here or something on YouTube, because I did some really good work in my classes. Like, that forced, it forced me to get stuff done. Like, that was, right. that was, like, my biggest obstacle with school was, like, completing projects, because I'm more of the artsy girl, so I'm, like, I have 10,000 ideas, and, like, I start one, and then I start another one, and, like, that was always my biggest obstacle school was finishing let's finish something. So in school, when I was doing the art classes, I'd show up late or I would do, you know, I wouldn't come to class one time, but then another time I would bring this beautiful picture of, you know, something that I painted at home till four o'clock in the morning because I was in my space. Funny enough, listening to Adele, which I know that that was one of Sophia's influences. I was listening to her. I think it was her 21 album and I was oh. painting. I'm going to put the, I'm going to put the picture on the YouTube. So myself, good. I had to do a self portrait, but it was a four foot one. So it's huge, what? but you had to do like a funny face. I did it in black and white and it was just this whole experience. And it, those are the things that I do appreciate, not just about school, but like the classes that I took, whether it was for a grade or not, is like, I had those experiences and they're always like, I'll always remember them. Like I will remember being on my knees on the floor with like the chalk in my hand and like till four o'clock in the morning till all my like fingerprints were gone because I was rubbing the paper so much. Like, so it's, it's, it's good. And like at the end of the day, once I got to, you know, coming to Miami and doing the transfer and actually getting my degree, I mean, I always wanted to say, like, I have the degree, I have the paper in my hand. And more so than anything else, in my case, it was like, I really did it for my parents. Like, that's, 
I mean, not to blame them or anything, but like I did it for them. Like that it was not for myself. And I know that a lot of people can relate to that because I feel like parents nowadays, like my mom, it took her a while, but after a while she was like, you know what? Like, I don't even care if you finish school or not at this point. Like, I just want you to like do something, you know, like whatever it is that you need to do. But like, um, yeah, like I'm, I'm pretty sure like if I didn't get my degree, like my dad would probably be disappointed. I didn't get my degree, but at the same time, I wouldn't be proud of myself. So it's, it's a mix of both. Like I'd be like, I'd feel like I didn't finish something again. See, I feel I can relate on the part. I think when I first went into college, I was doing it for my parents, right? Because I did not want to go. But then by the end of it, I was, it was so fully for myself. And I even remember walking across the stage to get my diploma. President Kelly, president of FAU, he still is. I remember him looking me in the eyes and going, you're so happy right now. Your smile is contagious. And I was like, yeah, like I just did this. Like you have no idea, dude. So I will never forget him saying that to me. And I mean, I was the first one out of my cousins and, you know, my sister's three years, three and a half years younger. So, but I was the first one to, out of like the kids and everyone our age to get my degree. So I was like, Hey, because I'm I've I've always been oh the artsy one you know doing my own thing. So for me it was so satisfying. I literally have it. I'm looking at it right now. I have my diploma <laughs> up and my graduation cap because it's be beautiful. Oh, I've never showed you That's Natasha. So funny. It's a see you on the red carpet. It has rhinestones all around it and it has stars like the Hollywood Walk of like Fame. And I did it myself. But yeah, That's so funny. So I mean, it's I'm so happy I did it. Looking back, if I could tell my 18-year-old self something, it's that you're going to be so proud of yourself that you ended up doing this because I wouldn't have put up such a <laughs> World War III in my house senior year of high school, like, well, and, that discussion. Well, and on top of that, too, I mean, obviously on your resume, I mean, that's always going to be, I mean, it's just kind of like a standard, right? Right, no I one mean, can ever take it away from you at this point. Yeah, it's you, you have it there. I, I don't know, I don't know if my life would be, playing out differently if I didn't have it to be honest I mean if I'm thinking about the jobs that I've had and stuff I don't know if per se they were you know oh she has the bachelor's in advertising like it's kind of like who cares at that point because it's like what you bring to the table but for sure I mean my senior classes were very useful very valuable I will remember my senior project forever that was a really big moment for me because I took it really seriously and I was partnered with three other guys I was one girl with three other guys yeah and they were smart guys too though they were they were brainy but like everybody had their you know their strengths and their weaknesses and mine was doing the video and the voiceover and everything that I do now like I did the whole presentation and I was really proud of it and everybody was like wow you know so because I had those skills that it was again in a class of you know not so many students I had I had all that experience that people didn't have like I was already in the workforce because I worked with my mom's company and stuff so I had that upper hand and luckily on my resume still. One last thing that I want to touch on. Oh boy. So we were talking about um, Sophia's new song that we're like, you know, I can't wait to hear the rest of the stuff that comes out on her EP. I wish she could have told us who the song is with. <laughs> oh, we were I so, know. she almost said it too. We would have been like, Oop. but I think what she said about the whole, this was not a relationship. I was dying because sis, we've been there. We, I, I know. I've been there. I, I think yeah. I think we've all been there for sure. Talking to Sophia reminds me of my 21, 23 year old self where it was just like, you know, that period of my life was, um, this is, this is past the, this is past the me getting out of my home phase. Cause me getting out of my home and discovering myself. I still like, I was 18. Once I got to like 21, 22, 23, then I was like exploring another side of myself, I guess. Not so much in school, but just like in life, being able to have access to so many other things, right? I had just moved to Miami, so it was a fresh new start. I had never been in Miami before. Like I literally just came here, like just kind of, I don't know where, like everybody would be like, oh, do you have family here? Nope. No. Do you have friends here? Nope. No, not, not, not that either. So <laughs> and, yeah, so I started meeting people and, you know, going out a lot and of course, in that experience, you know, I, I definitely had a moment just like Sophia's where it was like, you put yourself in a situation where, you know, whatever it is that's, you know, attractive to you. So in this case, ice cream and cigarettes, right? And I'm my hungry. Ice cream and, my ice cream and cigarette was, um, you know, the same thing where it was like, 
you might have been getting some kind of satisfaction out of it temporarily. You were licking the cone of ice cream, but then once it's gone or it melted it all over the floor, <laughs> what's left? Or right? yourself. You know, is it the sweetness or the bitterness? Because at that point, when you go home and you're by yourself and you don't have, you know, I guess the commitment or the person there for you, you start evaluating yourself, which is, it's bad because you should never judge yourself based on what the other person feels, thinks, or reacts towards you. You have your own identity and you validate yourself. Yeah. Nobody else should do that. And I know that it's super easy to say being just shy of 30 and if someone would have told me that on that time, probably wouldn't understand it still because I'm sure I was told that, but it's like you don't just, I don't know, you just don't get it yet because you're emotional and you have the feelings and, you know, whatever it is, lust, you want to call it. And so... Yeah, it happens, and I know in my case, what helped me get over it was not a, not writing a song, but definitely journaling. Just going to say that. Don't need to reopen those, but definitely journaling. I think you should totally um, open them and reread them at some point in the next five years. I think it would be the best thing I? ever. Yes. I, there's, I think we could get some no. really good podcast topics mm-hmm. off of it, actually. Okay, I will say I'll I'll open them and like I'll I'll open and and see if there is something that I can and I will if I can. What really helped me was two things. This was years later, by the way. This is only like a few. This is like honestly, like right before I met my fiance. Is when I got to a point where I started working and doing something for myself that I felt proud of because it again I'm a perfectionist, so it's really hard for me to be proud of anything I do. It's kind of effed up no I feel the same it's sick like but yeah when I started working for myself and doing things like that just whatever that made me feel more proud of myself and when I really had the moment of just sitting back and like kind of having my own self quarantine before the real quarantine I was like you know what like I am totally fine sitting here and watching how to get away with murder for you know three nights straight or I go to work I come home like I don't need someone I don't need to go somewhere like that feeling of like loneliness disappeared or desperation and I know that that's so common for so many people and I even have friends till this day where it's just like this anxiety like and and um how do you say it in English um like ansiedad like anxiety I guess about like needing constant stimulation oh, that's from me. a relationship or or validation and it's normal though like I I had all of that I had all of that but when I finally had that moment of just like I'm okay myself and like if I have my moment I have my moment or if I meet this person I meet this person but like it's not the end of the world and I'm not gonna obsess over it yeah and then like I always say then not that long after that I met the person that I'm with today because then it was like you finally like he was such a breath of fresh air because when I met him I was like oh my god finally someone gives a shit about me it's I, like I have goosebumps it's louder for the really people messed in the back up. <laughs> It sounds really messed up. It's not that, like, you know, my first serious relationship or second, like, it wasn't like they didn't give a shit about me, but it was, like, I always committed more to them or, like, I gave more of myself and I'd lose myself because I was constantly focused on them, hyper-focused on them and, like, their stuff and their needs instead of my own. And so, totally, even in this relationship, it's, like, always trying to find that balance of, like, okay, I have my own identity, too, because sometimes I've had my, my lapses, but... Yeah, I mean, it was the first time that I felt like someone 100% respected me and 100% cared, like, lo- like really loved me, like, more than himself, mm. you know? But it took a long time to get to that point, and it took all those experiences and my ice cream and cigarettes to get there. <laughs> Seriously. All I gotta say is that if anybody, even now, Raquel too, if anybody... Present, cupcake is after going out with someone or after a phone call or after a text or after not getting the call and not getting the text and if you're sitting on your fucking bed and crying over it stop because it's not worth it and they don't deserve that shit they don't no they don't because they don't care they don't care at the end of the day even if you cry and whatever and even if they know or they don't know at the end of the day the only person that's suffering is you seriously so don't it and and that's and this is why I told Sophia too. It was like 
it's crazy how like maybe you could call that a negative but you turned it into a positive by writing a song and like you know it could be this total banger because of that one stupid idiot literally and that situation you got yourself involved in but but I mean I didn't write a hit song and I was suffering by myself (laughs) crying in my bed and stuff over someone stupid so you know that's just all I'm trying to say is just it's not I know it's so simple and in the moment you feel everything and if there's one thing you can take away even from our conversation today or her song or whatever is find any way to validate yourself through your own self that's that's the best way to put it (laughs) validate validate yourself through yourself (laughs) yeah no of course I mean listen it's natural to be upset and you know I I feel like I was I feel like the past couple weeks all my friends have had issues with their their dude or their whatever and I've had to be like snap out of it like you don't deserve to be treated like this stop putting yourself out of this misery if it's a if it's a it was like a vicious cycle of being treated the same way of seeing him not it was great and dandy and then didn't talk to him for three days didn't talk to him for a week like we didn't know what was gonna happen making you feel miserable making you just it's not then stop like you you don't do that to yourself it's not healthy it's gonna drive you crazy especially when we're all stuck at home you can't really do too much right now I haven't dated anyone for a year so I'm used to always being out and like Natasha said stimulated I'm always like we're gonna go out we're going to this event we're gonna meet this person we're gonna meet this person me thinking that I'm just gonna sit at home and I can't do anything terrified the shit out of me and I'm finally I feel like in a place like as you were saying this Natasha like I'm good right now I think I I can actually say like I'm good right now because I know that the situation obviously is a little bit different. We're going through a global pandemic, but it's not in my control. Take it from someone who has anxiety and and deals with it every single day. Like get in that, try and get in that space, whether you have to kind of do whatever you need to do, read a book, go swimming, lay out, drink a white claw, whatever's going to make you. No, literally it's, it's, yeah, you have to, oh, 2000%. You have to find the things that make you happy. So like, and again, easier said than done. Yeah. It's the simplest things. Like, I mean, I'm, I like to buy stuff. Let's just say this is a perfect example, but like, I know that like, okay, me again, not to, not to be like, oh, superficial. It doesn't have to be material items, but just for an example, it's like, I really want to get this, you know, eyeshadow palette because it makes me happy. And then you play with it and you do this stuff and whatever. Little things like that. Do things that make you happy. Literally. Yeah. Or, or even if it's okay, I want to go and see, you know, I want to hear the ocean waves. Take yourself to the beach by yourself. Or if it's a matter of, you know, I really love having like a healthy smoothie in the morning. Go get yourself that damn healthy smoothie. Like, make uh, these are just my examples because these are things I like. (laughs) But like, that's what I mean. Like, it doesn't mean that you have to like go and spend, but like, do things that you know that are going to make you feel better about yourself. So like, you know, you have that little moment for yourself and then little things like that just add up. Or if it's like, I haven't done my nails in so long, go treat yourself to go do your nails. Like that, those are the things that like over time, if you do those little things for yourself, you're just going to feel better overall. You're not going to need, you're not going to have that need for something that's missing. Yeah. Um, and, and I think one of the biggest takeaways with kind of like, rounding off everything like from what Raquel said from what I said is like write out all the bad things about the person like if you're having an experience the person like that helped too the job the situation write them out do it totally make a list if you on your had, phone make a list on your computer talk note even and I think for me too going back to our last episode your vibe attracts your tribe like I know if I'm having a problem I talk about it with my friends just because I need to make sure I'm not the crazy one. You know, you, you almost need that, that validation. Um, but do that. I mean, if you can't talk about something with your friends, if they're going to judge you, get new friends. Seriously. Because. Yeah. No, no, for, no, for sure. The friend thing definitely helps, especially like even in, in the relationship I have now. Like sometimes there are things when you're maybe heated up or angry and you want to say it to that person. Maybe you should say it to your friend first. Yeah. To kind of like get it out before you do get yourself into a fight with the person. Because sometimes that's helpful, but. Um, but yeah, writing lists is, 
uh, that's the big thing too. I think not just like a pros and cons list, but like if you're trying to like get something toxic out of your life, like she said, whether it's a job, whatever, write out all the bad things about it because that will help you realize how shitty it is so that you don't put it up on a pedestal or you don't have that desire for it anymore. Yeah. So. And I think especially with me, that was like one of the the things I had to I've had a lot of growth this past year, I think, just from because I was in a transition period last year and now here we are in another one um, with work and stuff. I think I was holding on to something. I was I was holding on to something and the anger and it's not healthy and it makes you go crazy and it makes you have anxiety and it makes you have health issues. And it just once you start realizing how much better you feel without hanging on to something negative and it being your ice cream and cigarette, let's say, you know, you're going to be in so much of a better place. So I think we we unpacked a lot today. <laughs> I, feel like I, just, I feel like I just had therapy. I feel like really refreshed and rejuvenated <laughs> right now. But hopefully this happens for you. Hopefully you feel the same way. And we're excited that you guys are along on what? Along on <laughs> this journey. Wow, that was great. This journey with us. <laughs> Say it one more time. Along on this journey with us. Along on this journey with us. Yes, that was correct. Um, Make sure to follow Millennial Girls everywhere. Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Of course, follow our personals as well. Follow Natasha at... Natasha Salahi. Follow me at Raquel Goldie. And on Twitter, it's different now because I got locked out of my Twitter. So it's off the rack. Yes, go follow her new Twitter, her old slash new Twitter, off the rack. Right. And of course, you can listen to us here on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and iHeartRadio. So make sure to follow and subscribe. Click the bell if you're watching on YouTube so you Bring can get it. the notifications for every single time that we post up a video. And we'll see you in the next one. We'll see you in the next one. And guys, if you have any merch ideas, like we had said on our Instagram Live last week, and we're going to be talking about it tomorrow, definitely give us some merch ideas because Millennial Girls merch may or may not be coming very soon so we'll catch you guys next time peace love and unicorns unicorn